Hello, my name is Tim Hanshaw, and this video is the first in a series on computer programming using MATLAB. If you're planning to watch this video series, you may want to know a little bit about me and my qualifications for teaching this information. My background's pretty diverse. I have a bachelor's degree in aerospace engineering, and my first master's degree was in mechanical engineering. Both of these degrees were from the University of Arizona. The area of specialization for my master's degree was computational fluid dynamics. The goal of that field is to use computers to analyze the flow of fluids. After graduating from the U of A in the mid-80s, I worked at a company called Rocketdyne for about nine years. Rocketdyne is best known for manufacturing large liquid propellant rocket engines. I was in their system dynamics unit, which is responsible for predicting and analyzing the transient or time varying behavior of the engines. More often than not, computers were used to solve the equations which predict how these engines behave. In the mid-90s, I became interested in instrumentation, data analysis, and control theory, so I went back to school and got a master's degree in electrical engineering from Washington State University. It was during this time that I was introduced to MATLAB. MATLAB is a fairly high-level computing language, primarily used for engineering analysis. It's the programming tool we'll be using in this course. After finishing my electrical engineering master's degree, I started teaching in the electrical engineering department at Washington State University. This set of videos and text material is an outgrowth of one of the classes I've taught regularly for about the past seven years, which is an introduction to programming and numerical analysis. These videos are intended for engineers and scientists, and a lot of the examples are numerical analysis problems. Numerical analysis is the field devoted to using computers to solve the types of problems engineers and scientists encounter, such as solving linear and nonlinear systems of equations, integrating functions, solving differential equations, and lots and lots of types of data analysis. Mathematically, what you're probably currently most familiar with is symbolic analysis. As the name implies, in symbolic analysis, the unknowns are represented as symbols. For example, an equation like this is a symbolic representation. The unknown x is represented as a symbol. The point is that this equation provides a mathematical expression that's good for any value of x. In numerical analysis, however, everything, including the unknowns, is represented by numbers. Generally, the trade-off is that this exchanges the more complex mathematics in symbolic analysis for a very large number of simpler calculations using numbers in numerical analysis. In this example, it might be kind of tedious to use a pencil and paper to calculate the value of x that makes this expression equal to zero. In numerical analysis, however, a reasonable approach is to just plug in a bunch of different values for x until you find one that makes the expression close enough to zero. This trial and error approach would be difficult for a human, but computers have no trouble with the many calculations that are required. As I mentioned earlier, MATLAB is a high-level programming language primarily used for engineering analysis. MATLAB stands for Matrix Laboratory. The name reflects the fact that MATLAB is optimized for calculations involving matrices or collections of numbers. This makes it an ideal tool for engineers and scientists, since most numerical analysis techniques use a lot of numbers. I'm using MATLAB for this introduction to programming course for several reasons. One reason is that MATLAB's user interface is simpler and easier to use than most lower level programming languages. Also, MATLAB has a lot of built-in capabilities that make engineering calculations easier. This provides a long-term advantage to learning MATLAB, since you'll likely find yourself using it in other classes and in your professional career. MATLAB also makes creating attractive plots very easy. Visualizing and presenting mathematical functions and data is an important engineering tool. If you want to purchase MATLAB, you can do so from MathWorks. Students can get a fairly inexpensive, fully featured student version. Finally, here's some general tips relative to learning to program. Using MATLAB and executing the commands as you see them appear in the videos and the text materials will help you understand what's happening. Then, make some variations to my examples and make sure that you understand what effect the modifications have. 
even if MATLAB just gives you an error message, you can learn something by understanding why your example didn't work. Above all, don't expect to learn how to program simply by watching these videos passively. I've also provided exercises and homework assignments. Doing these exercises and understanding the results will reinforce the concepts presented in the related videos and text materials. Some slightly more personal advice is to be patient when you're programming and allow yourself plenty of time to complete a homework assignment or exercise. Errors in the programs may result from what seem to be minor details. My experience has been that it's easy to overlook these errors if you're in a hurry. For me, it's helpful to be able to take a break if I'm completely stuck on a programming problem. If I stop for a beverage, take a nap, or play with a dog, the solution to the problem is often obvious when I return back to work. Anyway, enjoy the course and have fun learning to program. With luck, you'll find lots of places in your other classes and your professional work where MATLAB programming makes your life easier.